Hi, this is Jonas. Today I want to talk to you about interactive test benches in VHDL. You have probably already heard about self-checking test benches, which are a normal kind of test bench where you press the run button and the test bench will run a bunch of tests on your device on the test and in the end print out a not OK or OK indicating that your module is working or not. An interactive test bench on the other hand relies on you as the operator to type in the commands in the, in the simulator console to provide the input to the device on the test and the test bench will uh, write the inputs to the uh, input sequence to the device on the test and wait for the output. Then you have to write the next command to make the uh, test bench continue. While you should always have a self-checking test bench, it can also be nice to have an interactive test bench because, for example, if you see some uh, bug or undesirable behavior in the lab, uh, you can quickly, if you have an interactive test bench, go and uh, provide the same input to the uh, device on the test and then you uh, hopefully can reproduce the error in the simulator. And as we all know, it's a lot easier to debug in the simulator than in the lab. Uh, okay, so I'm going to jump right into showing you an example of an interactive test bench that I am creating for a, an FPGA course that I uh, will soon launch. Here is the prototype of the uh, dot matrix LED controller, which I am creating in the uh, FPGA course that I talked about. Uh, the way it works is that I have the uh, uh, computer here with a serial terminal and I uh, whatever I type in here is sent over uh, UART to the lattice eye stick here and it will be shown on the uh, uh, dot matrix LED screen here. So it, as we can see it works here and everything I type uh, on the keyboard appears on the LED screen. This is the model sim VSGL simulator with the design that you just saw on the breadboard loaded. And here in the project window, we can see all the modules, the VGL modules and test benches associated with this project. So I'm going to show you the interactive test bench that I have created for this uh, course. Uh, I'm going to do that by down here in the model team console, run a script. By doing that, I'm, I'm typing do top interactive dot do. So this is uh, going to run the script in the top directory. Uh, with the name interactive.2 and uh, in model sim and like all like most uh, VHDL simulators the, the console is actually a tickle interpreter that is you can uh, use the tickle uh, programming language it's spelled TCL by the way but pronounced tickle and uh, you can make programs uh, in the shell here or run scripts like this one this dot do file is really just a tickle script and when I press enter now the tickle script is going to launch the simulation and interact with the device on the test. Run it for a little while, let me see here in the waveform. It has run for a very short while and then stopped, uh, just enough to reset the device on the test because this is an interactive test bench, so I have to provide the input. And I do that by uh, using another tickle function that I have created with the name TX. TX. Uh, and now I can provide some text input here, like VHDL, for instance. What's going to happen now is that the TX uh, tickle function is going to force the inputs on the... Uh, it's going to interact with the VHDL signals and force the inputs to the, to the device on the test to um, accept the text VHDL just as if I had written it through the serial terminal from the computer. So now when I press enter, The simulation is running and the output is being printed to the console here in a text representation of the dot matrix. This text representation of the dot matrix output is uh, produced by a VSGL process which is uh, listening to the output from the device on the test and drawing up whatever the uh, uh, device on the test is printing. So I have a VSGL process which is a bus functional model, module for the LED uh, display and that is what is drawing this uh, uh, output here. So let's have a look at the waveform and now we can see that the, there's a lot more go going on here. I'm going to zoom out 
pressing F to zoom out to see all of the waveform. Now here is something, the markers here are the report statements. Okay, I see the next marker, there are lots of markers here in the start. But here is one, uh, H, so th this is the H, it's just starting to write the H here. Then we can see this, um, all, all, everything that's going on here is the, um, has to do with the writing of the H character. Next character, D here, the D character, and the L character. And the D character is somewhere here in the beginning. Okay, so now it has stopped. The test bench has stopped and it's waiting, it's just paused. So if you want to, if I want to write another character, I'll just go here and do a TX, uh, A for example, like this. There you have it, an A. If I go here to the waveform, you can see that it has continued uh, a bit more since we stopped. So here's the A character. And that's how uh, you can use uh, interactive test benches in VHGL to debug your, uh, uh, the, the problems that you observe in the lab and re reproduce them in a nice manner in the test bench. And I, I, I'm talking a bit about this in the associated blog post. Click, click the description and uh, go to the blog post for this video. Uh, I'm going to show you a minimal example of how you can uh, uh, create this by using Tickle and by using VHGL. But I will be talking a lot more about this and showing you how to make exactly this test bench here and this design in the upcoming VHGL course that I'm creating. The VHGL course will be about creating a VHGL design, an FPGA design from scratch, from design, going through the simulation, making all the uh, test benches in the proper way, self-checking test benches and interactive test benches like this. And in the end, you will uh, have a working prototype, which I already showed you earlier in this video. So if you are interested in this course, then also go to the blog post and go to the bottom of the blog post and leave your name and email address and I will come back to you with more information as the launch of the course is getting closer.